Can you believe that the year is almost over? I don't know about you, but for me, 2023 just kind of whizzed by in a blur. Today, I'm sharing everything I made, or almost made, in the last year, and I'm telling you what went right, what I love, what did not work out so well, and what patterns to not ever use because they just don't work. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is So So Lounge. Now, I started off 2023 with a bang. The very first thing I made is turned has turned out to be one of my absolute most favorite pieces. This is Vogue 1754. It is still currently available in stores, and it is a wool cape coat. I used some gorgeous Valentino fabric that I bought in New York back in 2022, and I absolutely love this coat. It was a lot of work because when I cut it, I wanted to make sure that all of the herringbone matched. So there is a seam here, and I did match it perfectly, which I'm super proud of. And then there are also seams here along the front and it took a very long time to get this all cut because I wanted to make sure that that all matched up. And then also the herringbone pattern matches up the center front. And I, I spent a lot of time sewing on these hooks and eyes to make sure this all worked together. Now, unfortunately, I did not have quite enough fabric for the belt. So I improvised on the belt and you can see that there's a little bit of selvage on the backside. <laughs> it's right at the edge, but it created a very interesting detail of fringe kind of along the belt, which I really, really like. And then because I was short on fabric, I had to um, use some different lining fabric on the inside, but I think that just kind of adds a little extra something. And then this is what it looks like on, and I paired it with a plum colored skirt, which I just happen to have that is the same color plum as my cape coat and a black sweater over the knee socks and some cute booties and of course a black beret because you know it looks French. So that was the first piece that I made. I did not time myself sewing this but I am very happy with the way it turned out. I finished all the inside with um, my serger and it's just it's just absolutely beautiful. Now unfortunately because it is not ever super cold in Texas I have only worn this about four times. Um, towards the very early part of this year. It has gotten cold now, so I am hoping that I will be able to wear it again in um, 2024. We're supposed to have a cold winter down here in Texas, and I'm kind of looking forward to that because I'd really like to get some more wear out of this. Now, one of my goals for sewing in 2023 was to make some patterns from this book. It is Lotta Jan's Daughter Everyday Style. And my grandma gave me this for Christmas last year. And I thought, oh, you know, it'd be really fun to try some of the patterns in this book. It's a really, really pretty book. There are a lot of, you know, colorful pictures and inspiration from her travels around the world and these really pretty like mood boards. The patterns in this book don't work. I am not an inexperienced seamstress. I can sew a lot of things. I can make my own patterns. I don't know what the problem is, but they don't work. So the first thing I tried making was this skirt and, you know, it went together okay, but the sizing is very different from the sizing that they have listed in the book. So this should have fit me based on the measurements they list in the book. And it did not, it was like sausage casing. So that's why it's not put together anymore. I ripped the whole thing out. I was gonna add in a panel and then it just kind of got put back on the shelf. It would have been a very cute A-line skirt, but like I said, the sizing is off. So the one I made, which should have fit my measurements, didn't. And once you kind of cut fabric, it's kind of done. So I need to go back in and finish this. This was gonna be my Mardi Gras skirt. This is some pretty Mardi Gras bead fabric. I thought it would be fun to wear to court, but alas, that did not happen. Now, despite the fact that that skirt did not work out, I thought, hey, let's try another pattern from this book because, you know, maybe it was just me. Maybe I messed up on the sizing. And so the next pattern that I tried was making this dress. And first I made it in a muslin. And I have made a whole video about that if you want to go check it out. It's about, you know, making a muslin first. It was a disaster. Not that the muslin 
didn't come out right but the style of the dress looked horrible on me it basically looked like a sack and that pattern is a dress but then it's also a tunic length and then it's also like a tank so i was like okay i'll just make it as the tank that'll be fine and i used this waxed cotton which maybe was not the best choice but it was really pretty fabric i liked and i wanted to use it so that did not work out either what i ended up doing was finding another tank pattern which was on a website for a linen fabric company i will put the link in the description below so you can go check that out it is a free pattern if you sign up for their mailing list and then i franken fabriced it together so if you look closely you can see that i had to piece parts of it to make it all work and make this wearable again because i really love this fabric but the pattern wasn't working and then the pattern that I found was it was missing some sections <laughs> for it to be able to work. So to make it work, I had to do that. And then here is a picture of me and Jen. We were both wearing our own sewn creations. And I paired this with some white shorts and some wedge sandals just for a comfortable summer look. And I do like it now and it does fit, but this this book does not work so if you have this book and you've tried it let me know what you think if you've had a better experience but for me personally i will just use this kind of for inspiration colors and not really make anything else out of there because <laughs> twice and i'm done so moving on the next pattern i made was also out of a book this is from the nanny Iro sewing studio which is a japanese um, fabric design group and they also have patterns and I, I still need to put my so-so lounge label in here because i can't ever figure out which is the front and the back but it is basically a cocoon dress and my mom i showed it to her the other day and she said it really looks like a sack not a cocoon but this is how it's supposed to look and um i wore this to the an exhibit at the museum of fine arts here in houston with some black leggings here's a picture so you can see what it looks like on and i really like it this is kaif facet fabric um, which is primarily for quilting but i just love the colors and the print and i was like you know it really needs to just be shown off for its own design and the colors and that's why i made it as a cocoon dress which incidentally is also extremely comfortable so let me know what you think I love this one. I have worn it actually to the art museum a couple of times just because it's it's so comfortable. The next thing I made was actually an experiment in shopping on Amazon. So this is fabric that I bought on Amazon, which was from India. It is a wood block print on a very lightweight cotton fabric. It kind of feels like um, file or lawn. It's, it's very, very lightweight, very airy, and it's 100% cotton. I wasn't sure what I was gonna get, and it actually turned out to be a very nice surprise i definitely recommend the seller the it came very promptly by airmail and i made it into a tunic dress now this is simplicity 4632 which is an out of print pattern but you might be able to find it on ebay or etsy and it's just a very basic kind of tunic with a collar and i really like it for summer here it's I had initially thought it would be a dress, but this fabric is extremely sheer. So I wear this with black leggings and some wedge sandals in the summertime. And I think I have a picture. This is what it should look like <laughs> when I had it on. I wore it to my cousin's graduation party. And um, so that's what it looks like. And it's very, very comfortable. The fabric is brightly colored. It does not look quite so bright on Amazon. So I'm glad that I took the chance and and made it and bought it because um, it definitely is really fun and just kind of summery. Up next is New Look 6374, which is also an out of print pattern, but you might be able to find something similar or find this pattern at a reseller. Now, I didn't make one dress, I made two dresses. So this dress is the subject of the two hour sewing challenge can i sew a dress in two hours and the answer was almost and this is the second one this is actually one i made first to test it out to see how the pattern was going to work and that's when i realized that doing the double stitching on the facing was the way to go a couple of other little techniques that i shared when i actually made this one and these were my travel dresses when i went to london and spain 
back in the late spring, early summer, because I love to wear a maxi dress on the plane. These are super soft knits. I do not remember where I bought them exactly, but I will find out and put a link below. So if you like these kind of funky graffiti newsprint type style fabrics, then you can get them too. And I do have pictures of me in them. Here is one which was in the lounge on the way home. And then um, the uh, first one is with my sister when we were getting ready to leave the state. So these were super, super comfortable, really good idea to make these dresses for travel. And I will definitely be wearing them if I travel again this summer. If you want to see all of these clothes modeled on me, I will be doing a style show, as grandma likes to call it, at the end of this video. So be sure to stick around until then. Coming up next, we've got another pattern from McCall's. This is 8160. I got this as a free pattern with my Love Sewing magazine that I picked up when I was in London. You can also find them here in the States um, occasionally at Joann's. They are very pricey and um, but they do come with free patterns so i decided i was going to try out this dress in this lovely lawn batik lawn that i got at leo nine textiles this was from lee's personal stash so um she was kind of clearing things out and i was lucky enough that there was just enough to make this dress i absolutely love this dress here is a picture of me i was over at a party at jen's house and wore it it's super comfortable, super, super lightweight. It is perfect for summer here in Texas. You can see how I styled it with some wedge sandals and just kind of good to go with the perfect outfit. And I love this dress so much that I made another one in October, more in fall variety, fall colors. This is um, Japanese fabric that I did buy at Leo 9 as well. And I've i love this fabric. I wasn't really sure what to do with it. And I decided I was going to make this dress and lay out the pattern so that you could really get the most of the fabric. That is the beauty of this design is it's a boxy kind of dress, but it's short. So it's very cute. I wore this for Thanksgiving this year and um, paired it with some cute booties and black leggings and a black sweater because it was a little bit cold that day. But I really like this design. It is a very quick sew. If you were looking for something fast, this is available here in the States just from McCall's. The next time Joann's has a sale, you might want to get it. It's a super quick sew. The sleeve is very, very easy and there are no closures. You just pull it on. Now in July of this year, I made another Vogue pattern. This is Vogue 1872. This is currently available in the pattern books. And I made version A, which has a contrasting top panel. It's a wrap skirt and contrasting top panel that matches the waistband and then, you know, contrasting fabric for the base of the skirt. Now I bought this fabric when I was in New York and for some reason I thought like, oh, this is going to look so great together. And it just really doesn't. I do not like it. Um, the it's all linen fabric but the top piece this piece is just heavier and you know when i flip it around so that it's just all these citrus print i was like why didn't i just make that like i don't know what i was thinking i guess i didn't realize that this piece was so big on the front and that it was going to look like a weird apron so i made it it came out pretty well but I don't like it. So I bought some lime green linen from Leo 9, which I think will just look better overall with this skirt. And I'm going to replace this panel. And then as I was thinking of it, I might just take the whole skirt apart and remake it so that that color is like this front panel because these are all the same pieces. So I can interchange the um, either front piece and make it better. I guess I could, yeah, no, I can't use, I can't wrap this because it's too more, but I could swap out this fruit piece for this blue piece or swap out this fruit piece for the lime green. So let me know what you think. When I took this up to um, Lee and David at um, Leo 9, they didn't think it looked as bad as I thought it was. Lee said she thought it looked nice, but I just don't love it. I think I'd like it a lot more and I'd actually wear it if it was just this brighter kind of color. I'll still leave the waistband on because I do like that, but I'd appreciate your thoughts. So let me know what you think. Um, then the other thing is, is that I made it in a size 14, which is a little bit small. 
and so it's it's kind of tight right now but i will i will model it at the end so you can see how it looks and i'd appreciate your feedback about keeping or getting rid of this or just remaking the whole thing so um that was this not quite as successful as i would have liked but i still really love this fabric so i, I definitely want to do something to salvage it coming up next is this black linen dress it is a little hard to see because it is so black there is a seam down the front there is a diagonal seam going from the hip up kind of to the navel and then there are these really cool kind of inset seam pockets and it does have an asymmetric hemline this is made out of some black uh linen that i got at leo 9 and i was originally going to use this linen for one of the um jan's daughter dresses and decided to not do that and to save my linen for something else i'm really glad i did this is the pharaoh dress from grainline studio and this is the first time i've used this pattern and i really liked it I the only thing I would change is I drop the neckline just a little bit because for me personally it's a little bit high but it has a simple closure hook and eye in the back it is a great summer dress I did wear this to brunch one day um, with Dan and we sat outside and it was just like the perfect spring weather here in Texas or actually it was early fall at that point but um, I really like this dress and I will put the link to the pattern in the description below so apparently I sewed with a lot of McCall's patterns this year. This is another one from McCall's. This is 8205. This is a learn to sew pattern. I made the shorter version. Now I previously made this last year as a holiday skirt. And this year I decided to make it using this really fun um, African wax cotton that I bought at the International Quilt Festival. Now this fabric spent the least amount of time on the shelf in the stash because I bought it one weekend and made the skirt the next weekend. Now, a couple of modifications from the original pattern. The original pattern has a seam down the front and a seam down the back with a center back zipper. I patterned out the seam because I did not want to have to try and match this fabric, um, just because as you can see, it is very colorful and there are a lot of diagonals and stripes. And so I was like, no, let's pattern that out. We'll put the gold medallions down the center front and then keep them in the back and then go accordingly try the best i can to match up the sides which mixed results there but i put in the zipper into the side seam and voila there you go it is a cute full skirt i have not worn this yet so i will um model it for you and you can tell me what you think it is very full but it is very cute i do plan to wear it with just a black top and some cute shoes because I think that the skirt speaks for itself. It's super colorful. And, you know, you can see this is one of my fabric staples, bright colors, interesting designs. There's a lot going on here. Next, I made McCall's 8144 just in this basic top. And I actually found some stretch velour that was pretty much the same color as the one on the pattern. And it's very pretty. I haven't worn this yet either because it just got cold enough to be able to wear something this fuzzy and it turned out pretty well i do not love the center front seam it was very hard to finish i had to do a rolled hem seam finish because the surging just was not working and then when i sewed the hem and the sleeves it kind of has this little puckering look which i managed to achieve all the way around the bottom and on both sleeves so it looks very intentional but it was not um this is just casual to kind of wear with jeans i think it it looks okay I, I wouldn't be ashamed to wear it but it's definitely not something that i would do again um this fabric is just hard to work with and you know me i like easy fabric that that does what it's supposed to do and acts right and the lure is just kind of it's a little temperamental and i did not like i said the seam finishing was really difficult and i don't love the end result of it but know still a cute top it'll be fun to wear it's nice and soft and warm so all good things now we finally have a simplicity pattern this is simplicity uh 1318 this is still available in stores i was making version what is that one c which is this one here on the front and it is not quite finished i am using some of my um japanese fabric this is kusama fabric it is really really beautiful 
I am having a really hard time getting this neckband piece to match up the way it's supposed to, but it is very, it's going to be really pretty when it's done. I just have to rip this out again because it's going to show and I need these seams to be matched up. It's just one of those things. So let me show you guys what, how this looks. Um, so I want the seam to match on the shoulder seam and that's not working, but I've got to do it one more time. As you can see, it's kind of asymmetric in the back. I have to add the bands on the sleeve. It's not quite done yet. I was working on this before Christmas and then just ran out of time. So this will be finished in the early part of next year, but I think I'm happy with the progress, but for the, the challenge of sewing curves at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is way bigger than you ever need. I also made some costumes for a production back in August. It was for Night Court Lawyers Entertaining for Charity here in Houston. And I made four bot costumes, which I no longer have. And then I also made these Groot overalls shown here on my friend Chelsea. And then also this gold dress with planetary headpiece for the Galactic Mediator. Now, if you want to see any of that process, I made a whole video of the entire events of costuming and making all these costumes and what happened you can check it out up here so next up is mccall's 6251 this is a knit pajama pattern it is currently available in stores and the challenge with this was the fact that it is a unisex pattern and the sizing is off so when I took my measurements and compared them to the back of the pattern envelope, it said that I should make a large. I was like, there's no way I needed a large and a unisex pattern, which only goes up to 2XL and includes men's sizes. This is not going to happen. So what I did instead was measure each pattern piece at the waist and hip and then compared which size would be better for me based on the amount of ease and how I like my clothes to fit. So Pattern said large, I ended up making it a small and these pajamas fit perfectly. Now I used fleece, which is a quasi knit. It does stretch widthwise, which is what you need for this pattern. And it did meet the right stretch requirements. So you can make it in fleece, even though fleece is not one of the listed fabrics on it. But I would say definitely take the time to go measure and make sure you get the right size and do not go by the pattern envelope. So these are my kitty pajamas. I love these pajamas. They are super warm and comfortable. We went out West and we're in the mountains in West Texas and I wore them every night and they were super snuggly. And I really am happy that I made them. This was a one hour sewing project. And I think that you could definitely do it in one hour. Probably could have done it a little bit faster if I hadn't been filming, but not by much, maybe like 10 minutes. So if you want some really cute pajamas, this is a great pattern to use, but you know, you're warned, measure it first. So last but not least are fleece jackets that I made for grandma. Now I made this as a two hour sewing challenge. Can I sew a fleece jacket in two hours? And this is McCall's 8143. This is the third time I made it was in September and this was a jacket for grandma and she absolutely loves it. And I used a 24 inch zipper because I bought the wrong length. And so I was like, okay, I'll just not put it all the way up into the collar like the pattern suggests. And then grandma liked it better that way. So she's like, please don't put the zipper that high if you make this for me again. And so when I made it for her for Christmas, I made in this lovely cardinal fabric. She loves cardinals. It's her favorite bird. I just did the exact same thing and just made it to the bottom of the collar. And she absolutely loves it. She cried. And here is a picture of grandma in the cardinal fleece at Christmas with me. And she was very excited. She said she hoped she was getting another fleece because the first one I made for her was for Christmas last year. So that was another really great pattern. I've made this a couple of times. The funny thing is, it's like I write the dates on the pattern envelopes of every time I finish it. So when I made it for Christmas for grandma last year, I made it on December 22nd. And then when I made it for her this year, I made it on December 23rd. So it was kind of funny that, you know, I made that both times. And then I did modify the pattern because this is a half zip pullover fleece. And I just cut straight down the center front, put in a separating zipper 
And it's a very easy modification to make for this pattern if you are looking for a, a good quality fleece pattern. If you want the zipper to go all the way up to the top of the collar, you need a 26 inch zipper. If you want it to look like I did with grandma, then you would need a 24 inch zipper. And I also made a couple of other little things this year that were not clothing related. I made some Christmas stockings as you know, one kind of fun sew along. And then the other one was a little zip bag tutorial that is lined on the inside. And this is out of the Japanese fabric scraps that I had from my dress. So you can see that like they go together. Not that I'd use it as a purse, but I just love this fabric. So I'm glad I could reuse it for something. Which one's your favorite? I would like to know and keep watching for how I style and accessorize these looks. And I can't wait to hear from you.